Hi, I'm Brittany Ward with the Oklahoma City Police Athletic League. This week I had the great pleasure to interview Cynthia Allen for our Game Changers project. She spearheaded the Loja Samos project with AT&T and is now the Director of Corporate Relations for OU. So without further ado, here's Ms. Allen. Well, so I'm originally from Chihuahua, Mexico, and so I came to Oklahoma City when I was seven. And so since then, Oklahoma City has been home. So um, I'm an Oklahoman, I, and I love all that we're doing here in our city. So what, what schools did you go to? So I, gosh, elementary years, I hopped around to several schools, um, but I'd say my roots kind of, you know, we started becoming a little bit more, I guess, rooted, um, starting fifth grade. And so Capitol Hill Fifth Year Center, which, you know, that kind of <laughs> doesn't exist anymore. Um, Jackson Middle School, Northeast Academy. So Oklahoma City Public School, that's, that's where I came from. Awesome. Did you have... Did you play any sports or did you have any mentors in your life? Um, was English a first language in your home? How does that, how was that? Yeah, thanks. So actually, no. So English wasn't a first language. Um, coming from Mexico, Spanish was our, our first language. And in fact, I remember, you know, when we first came uh, to Oklahoma, um, you know, I came into the second grade. And so it was so different and you know just different environment um my parents had a little bit of English when we came and so we had like some I guess real basic knowledge of the language and so this is a funny story that I'll never forget so in my first day of school um you know August in Oklahoma right so that's the setting and I remember the teacher you know getting to know all the students and asking, so what do you want to be called? And I thought, why is she saying it's cold? It's not cold. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so I thought, I just kept saying no. <laughs> so I think it was a little moment of, of just, you know, confusion for sure. But, you know, trying to put language together with just a new setting, it, it was a um, very interesting. So English was definitely not our first language. Um, there's another story of language where, um, you know, there was a, a kid in, in our neighborhood and um, she asked me to be her friend. And so I ran in the house and I asked my mom and I said, she said something about friend. And so my mom said, I think she wants to know you're French. <laughs> So oh my gosh. I came back out and I said, no. And so the kid, I imagine, was heartbroken. And eventually, I'm sure we made a repair. But it's just so <laughs> funny. Like, all of the things, you know, all of the stories. So, you know, it's, it's just a, an experience of, of being in a new place, of learning a new language, um, of scary. You know, Thrilling, yeah, scary, and, and also not always getting it right, obviously, you know, with these <laughs> stories. But at, at the end of the day, um, my family just, you know, we just persevered to, to know the language, to get to know it, to, um, to just really do our part in, in becoming more, um, I don't know, just comfortable in, in this new kind of environment and world. And so, you know, funny enough, then by the end of second grade, I was like on that reading, you know, like just momentum and, and I would just read and read and read and, uh, you know, started kind of listing on the honor roll and listing on the student of the month. And, and that just kind of continued all through my uh, school years. Um, but it was all kind of, you know, it didn't start easy it didn't start that way you know it started off by saying no to things of you know what do you want to be called and do you want to be my friend oh. <laughs> um I what I keep hearing is how important to you um, education is and also that you have just like this innate hunger to learn absolutely well so you know 
and my my mom and and dad you know that's what they that's what they pushed and that's what they encouraged my sister and I to you know just always learn and and really immerse yourself in the learning and education you know I remember even um for a moment of of time we actually had to go back to Chihuahua for a semester and so now I had to go back and learn how to learn how to be in a learning environment you know in a different country again and so that was tough um but even in that moment uh, my mom just pushed you know you can do this and you can learn and she encouraged us to be creative and learning and just you know if it's a history lesson just you know place yourself in the story and if it's you know a book like you know just go there and so it was just she was just very motivating and um and so then eventually next semester we came back to Oklahoma and uh and then just kind of continued on with the track that I shared and and so yeah so learning is a big deal education's a big deal um you know I guess my my jump from not being familiar with you know with what learning in English or learning in, in the United States or just even the language was, was all smoothly transitioned as best possible because of great teachers and great, you know, I guess, administrators and, and you know, people who cared about making sure that, that those gaps were filled. Eventually, you know, so we did a little bit of the, um, ELL learning and things like that for the first year or so. But, you know, by the third grade, like, you know, my sister and I were in just regular classes because we had that real, um, just great support. And so I love education. Um, I love the, the power that it gives anyone. And so I just encourage it if there's, you know, students watching this, to just really believe in yourselves and to give the best of you. Because at the end of the day, you know, even the best teachers can only work with what you give them. So, right. uh, so yeah. So, and at the end, you know, there's no limits and it's true. Whenever you hear little taglines, like, you know, education is the key and, and whatnot. And it really is. Even now, you know, in my current role, um, I see amazing stories happen through education. So um, where did you go? Did, did you go to college? Um, where did you go and what did you study? Yeah, so I actually attended the University of Oklahoma. Um, and so, yeah, we were sooner. Uh, so I attended the University of Oklahoma. I was super excited to come. Um, had no clue what I was getting myself into because, you know, I was the first in my family to actually attend uh, college. And so, my goodness, like even my first day of classes, <laughs> just thinking back to the experience of, you know, not even wearing the right attire. I mean, I'll just tell you the story. So I thought, you're in college, you've got to, you know, like, be the part. And, and so I came with a little bit of heel and a little bit of, you know, just lots of excitement. And by the end of the day, I thought, what am I doing like on this campus with a heel? <laughs> like, you know, once you start walking from class to class and, and it campus hurts. is huge. Takes a toll. <laughs> I mean, that'll tell you that I, that there was an, a new experience for me for sure. But, but again, you know, you learn off of those little hiccups and little things and, and you just, you know, change it up and, and make it right. I think you are, um, what I keep hearing is how that old saying, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. You you seem to always find this silver lining, no matter what you're going through. You're a very positive person. I, I'm feeling that from you. And um, one, it's refreshing. And uh, two, how do you, how do you maintain that? I, there are going to be challenges and hardships going to college getting out of college, trying to find a, a, a job. So how do you navigate all of that, number one? And number two, how do you maintain such a positive persona about all of it? Yeah, well, thank you. Um, and it's it's definitely not something just, you know, 
you just have this thing, you know, that you've got to deal with and it's just like, ah, just smile. It, you know, that's fine. No, I mean, so you, it is about being realistic with the situation. So for sure. Uh, but at the same time, it's about, you know, what is the situation? And so that's one of the things that I like to um, just really do my best at, at working through problems or, or, you know, tough times is, okay, so this is, this is the, the situation at the present and always kind of focusing on the fact that, you know, a moment is not, it's not forever. It's, it's, you know, this is right now. So what can we do with the resources that we have, the situation we have, um, really, you know, making sure that we think about how to navigate past it, right. And how to make it better, how to come out with a lesson learned, um, how to help others through these things too, because, you know, my story of wearing heels on the first day at college, <laughs> I'll make sure. And I tell, you know, my daughters and I'm like, you know, I did that. So we're going to make sure you have some comfy tennis shoes. <laughs> and so it's just those things that, um, that you just really have to have to realize that even the t- toughest moments, even the most heartbreaking moments, you know, they're real and they hurt and, and it's tough but we've got to you know move forward and we've got to be able to look at our resources look at our surroundings be thankful we've got to be so thankful that you know even in the toughest situations um you know there's hope i love how you said that i think that it's really important to realize i think especially as a young person it's hard to you know you know what it's like when you're a teenager and it, everything that happens to you is like times 10 Whereas an adult, you may have the ability to separate yourself from from what's happening and and be logical and rational about how to deal with it. But as a young person, it's really difficult to do that. And it can feel like the world is crashing down on you. But I love that you said it's a moment. So moment isn't forever. It's just a bad moment. A, A bad moment doesn't have to lead to a bad day or a bad week or a bad year. It's just a bad moment. And certainly you can get past that moment and still have a really great day. Uh, I really like right. that you said that. Um, so after you attended OU, what did you graduate? What kind of degree did you have? And then where did you go from there? Yeah, so my degree is in sociology. Um, I actually started off with a, a business track and I was you know, in that track for a couple of years. And so you know, then I had this kind of like life you know, personal family um, tragedy happened. And so I thought, okay, well, I can either stay on this track or I can, you know, like shift to something that allows me to help others. So then that's when I shifted to sociology. And so funny enough, though, I was a a full-time employee at AT AT&T while I was a full-time college student. Oh, wow. So, yeah, (laughs) it was a... yeah, Time management a, skills. <laughs> <laughs> it was something for sure. But um, but I say that because, you know, so my heart kind of led me to shift my career tracks. Um, but, you know, my, 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 I guess, pull still continued into business. And so because of that AT&T background, I was able to kind of still stay in the business track. So I say that just to kind of circle around. <laughs> And bring things together. So when you, I think uh, people, if you think about how much energy it requires to do that, because I was a full-time student athlete. And so basically it's like having a full-time job. And I look back now and I'm like, there's no way. I don't know how, I think today I could not do what I did then. I don't even know how that's possible to have that much energy and enthusiasm. But when you're 20, it's different. Well, congratulations to you because you're right. I mean, that's that's a whole um, responsibility, right? To to be a student athlete and keep your grades and keep your energy and you know preparation for the sport. So, way to go! It's the same thing, though. Working a full time job and attending school, it's like time management. Um, being able to understand what you need for your well being is really important, so you're not just depleted all the time. It's just there maybe you were and you just got through it. I don't know, but um, it's just 
That's really awesome. So at AT AT&T, what what were you doing at AT AT&T? So during my college um, years and the, you know, first part of my career there, I was actually a um, a call, a credit and collections representative. And so okay. I would call people and, you know, remind them that either something was due or, you know, there needed to be some type of payment made. So that was my job. And then, so what does that look like? So there's some structure, corporate structure in place that allowed you to kind of continue to to grow and work your way up to talk talk to us about your your professional career yeah so um so that was my first job um at at and right was you know on the phones three to eleven shift um and just you know really making sure that that those responsibilities of of hitting the calls and hitting the customer quality and and all of the different elements so so there's always a structure to what makes what makes a job, you know, well done. And so I always, you know, kind of going back to the, you know, student um, coming into the United States, it's like, well, you got to give it your best. And so, you know, read and read more, Um, you know, get to get to know the the material and just really be a good student. Well, in, in a job setting, it's the same thing, right? So it's like, if you've got a, a call kind of quality check and just make sure you get to know it and make sure that you know that you're hitting those things um make sure that you're personal right with your customers etc so I say that because I really I really immersed myself in my job even as entry level as it was and I really enjoyed it And, and quite honestly even though it was one of those call center type of you know call people and and remind them of due bills um I really, really had fun and really enjoyed it. Um, I think that allowed me to just get to know more of the company. And so I started kind of just asking questions about, well, you know, so we're this small part of the business, but how do we connect to these other pieces? And so I just kind of started getting curious about really what the big picture of the business looked like. And I think that curiosity Um, became noticeable with some of our leaders. And so then I started getting, you know, these projects and and things of that nature that really allowed me to not just show more of my skills, but then also continue to get to know more of the business and other areas that if you just go to your job and you just sit at your desk and do your, your task and don't look past that, then you're not ever really going to, um, to be able to, you know, be creative or get to know more, or see beyond what your role is. So, um, so that was that. I, I graduated college, and you know, af- after a couple of years, and still doing you know the, the good task work, and also the above and beyond kind of committee work and so forth. I received a promotion into management. Um, I did that and again I think the ta- the the trait that kind of carries along is that through all of those promotions and all of those opportunities it was always about you know how to how to do more and how to serve more um whether it was when I managed a team how do I make sure that my team you know feels supported and um and how do I make sure that they are they know about their own career growth and how do I help them be be better or even help them get promoted so um, how do I bring in more support eventually I started uh, focusing on a diversity and inclusion track um, with AT&T and so I started creating more engagement around employee resource groups which you know I think um, from the PAL standpoint that could be you know where the employee support pal or something to that effect it's kind of like volunteerism right that's an aspect of it and so you know at first our teams um didn't know what that was all about and they wondered well why are we focused on volunteering you know we're here to do a job or why are we focused on community and diversity you know we're all here and we're here together um but i really through continuous efforts i'm just you know, kept kept being consistent with opportunities and sharing with them why. And eventually we had great engagement, um, you know, to the 
effect of being present at community festivals, being present, you know, at um, food banks, being present, you know, in schools, uh, volunteering. And so, so all of these things, um, you know, that I help bring together, I think not just obviously helped me in career growth and, and getting opportunities, but it also helped, you know, those that I engage. So I think that's the most important part. And um, your employees, the people on your team, you know, they, you basically opened a whole different world for them and sort of showed them how it's both personally and professionally rewarding to be active in your community. For sure. And, you know, and it's nice to be able to think back and just like, you know, specific stories of how, you know, I can think of this person and how, you know, because of the encouragement and the mentorship that they received, they were able to, you know, move up in their career. Or maybe because of the mentorship and the support, they were able to grow in their, you know, engagement and community um, just skills. And so just being able to help people see the possibilities of their engagement is just awesome. I love that. It's what it's all about, right? If you get up the ladder, you got to reach back and help somebody else up too. So we can just keep growing Oklahoma City, our community. Um, so what is your current job title? And what does it mean for you to be um, a woman in that role and also Hispanic? So my current role is Director of Corporate Relations at the University of Oklahoma. And what that means is, um, you know, obviously uh, at the institution, it's, it's huge. And we've got, you know, a lot of students, um, 30,000 plus students. And, you know, what they're here for is to, to grow in their um, preparation um, academically and, and then, you know, come away with a strong job. And so, but in that time, it takes support, it takes scholarships, it takes internships, it takes exposure, um, you know, and so my role helps in all of those buckets um, to help bring in some funding for scholarships, um, bring in research opportunities, bring in um, partnerships so that employers know the talent that we have at the university. And so, um, so I do this with our, our corporate partners to connect them across the three campuses of Tulsa, um, Oklahoma City Health Sciences Center, and here in Norman. And so, you know, uh, as a woman and dealing with a lot of um, my, my partners are, are mostly, um, you know, for the most part in, in corporate, they're very diverse and and such, but the majority of the decision makers, even today, are males. Are um, you know, um, older segment males, uh, white males, etc. And so, you know, as a Latina in this role, I think it's just it's an opportunity for them to see the um, the visibility of diversity within our institution. Um, but it's also the opportunity for us to get to know each other and, and share maybe a story that connects us. Um, and so I always look to build those personal relationships. Um, you can kind of hear that through, you know, the way that I led uh, my teams at, at at and the way that I'm leading now. It's through really valuing those personal relationships. So I bring my whole self, um, you know, and and make sure that they know that, I'm comfortable in, in being open and in sharing. And so I think what it provides in this role is just that opportunity for them to have a diversity lens that, um, you know, that's valuable. Yeah, you would bring a totally different perspective. Like those things certainly make you um, the wonderful person that you are. And I love that you fully embrace that and use it as an opportunity to, I don't want, I don't want to detract from you and your professional development, but it's, it's, it's almost like you're, you're representative of your whole people group too, right? You're, you're showcasing the talent that um, Hispanics and Latinas can, can bring to that sort of role or just in general can, can bring to other, other roles. Yeah, no, I think you're right. I think that it's a in general kind of thing where, you know, 
it's, I love to see, um, you know, people of color in just you know, different type of leadership roles. And so, you know, with having that experience in diversity and inclusion at at and I somehow just really see anything through that lens. And so when I go into different companies, when I go into communities and, you know, I'm looking at the leadership, um, you know, I look for, for that. I look for, for diversity of thought, diversity of experience. You know, it's hard to be able to fulfill someone's needs if you don't understand them, you know, right. just in general or are aware of them. And so, so those type of things are important for sure. And that's where I think representation really makes a difference. It really does. Um, seeing is believing. So not only as a little person who's aspiring and um, thinking about what they're going to be someday, but also as an adult or when you're graduating college and you're on the forefront of getting your first job, how do you know what's possible for you if no one's done it before? And earning certainly you've earned that spot at that table and you're paving the way for other people to you're empowering them to say like, here, here's, I saved this spot for you. Come join me, come join the conversation. I think that that is amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Well, you know, um, someone did it for us, right? No matter, no matter what your story is or the background where it's, you know, you're native born Oklahoma or you're, you know, an immigrant like I am, someone, helped someone believed in you um someone provided an opportunity and so i think it's so important that we do that as well well cynthia is there anything else that little thoughts or little nuggets of wisdom for our young people that that you'd like to share you know i would like to just um tell them congratulations for taking the action of being part of okc pal um you know, I think it's just so important to, to be engaged and to be a part of your community. And so I bet that they have seen a whole lot of people care about them through the PAL program. And so, you know, I want them to recognize that, that, that there are people that are going above and beyond to make sure that they have the support they need and, and to utilize it. So. So take that and and actually, you know, go share it at some point or grow and, and just really know that there is that support. Um, as a kid growing up in South Oklahoma City, I was engaged in a couple of um, organizations as I was growing up. And I know for a fact that if I wasn't engaged in those organizations, my opportunities would have been different because mm. I would have had the same access or the same support or the same you know opportunities so it's the same way for the students at pal you know this is a great program that provides just open doors and so i am so sure that you know fast forward even five years from now and there's going to be some amazing leaders come through this program and when you think back Okay, see, Pal is going to be one of those things that you can say, you know what, that made a difference. So, um, you know, for the students, just continue to just bring your whole best selves to this. Continue to bring your whole best selves to your schools and your classes. Um, remember that, you know, the teachers can only work with what you give them. And so bring your best self. And at the end of the day, you know, um, I think a message for the coordinators, the participants, volunteers, sponsors, et cetera, pal, um, you know, just thank you for your commitment because it's programs like these that really shape communities. And so, um, so this is one that makes a difference. Thank you so much for that, Cynthia. That means a lot. Yeah, I, I'm really excited and, and I love to see how uh, our community grows. Well, um, I just really wanted to say thank you for your time today. It's been an honor and a privilege being able to learn more about you and to deep dive into this incredible person that you are and professional and a woman and a Latina and a, um, an amazing leadership position. So just thank you so much for making time for us today. Brittany, thank you. Have a good one. Thank you, you too. Bye. Bye-bye.